Hello class, welcome to the final lecture on matrices where we finally get to a use as to why do people have these things? Why are there matrices? Why do they exist? Who uses this? What is it good for? Does it save anybody any time? Uh, yes, we saw last time that it solves systems of equations like that and it can model data from real life in other ways too. There are lots of really good uses for this. This is something that is used all the time. If you go to work for Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat, you and you're a programmer, you would be using matrix style math all the time. So the one we're gonna talk about today are called walks. This is about information that is connected in some way. So you look at this matrix and you say, what is going on here? How are these bits of data related? Well, somehow this column right here, where they're the three and the one and the one and the zero are in the same column. That data must be related somehow. Whatever this is modeling, there must be something that is connecting those four bits of data that way. That bottom row of, of four zeros, that must be modeling something. There's some feature of reality that is being mapped onto this matrix, simplified into this matrix, that for each of its four relationships to these other things has nothing in that relationship, has zero. So this must, the rows have to have something in column, common, the col columns have to have something in common. This data must be related in this linear crisscross matrix kind of way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take trees, connections of things, and you might think of like subway stops being connected or something like that, and we're gonna say the number zero means that two nodes on the tree are not connected, versus the number one means that a path exists from the first node to the second node. All right, what am I even talking about here? So if you picture a real life tree, a real life tree has branches, has places where it forks and goes off in different directions. So if you look at all the spots where things can branch and you put a dot, I'm onto the second picture, then you start to see how there are connections. Some things are connected directly to others and some things aren't. And then if you take away the tree in the end, you're left with what mathematicians mean when they say a tree. That this is a very abstracted thing here. There's no xylem and phloem and bits of sap and what have you, that this is all just connections between nodes. So here is a bit of data represented in some ways that you might prefer or not. If you look at the first one here, this is called a diagram map. It's got um, nodes numbered one, two, three, and four, and then they are connected to one, two, three, and four themselves, and you're seeing whether there is a connection or not. So maybe the most intuitive, the most useful way for your brain to grab this quickly is the middle one here, the digraph. This is where you can look, but follow me and look at dot number one, and you can see, I mean node number one, you can see that there is a connection. There is a way to get from one to two, from one to three, from one to four, and even from one to one, that that is what the sort of loopy one means there. You look at number two, and there is no way to get from node two to node one. That the little arrowhead there is showing you, no, that direction, that's a one-way street. You can get from two to two, you can get from two to three, and you can get from two to four, um, but those are the, the four connections from node number two. Now, look at the matrix on the right. Do you see how this is the same information? We've got column one, column two, column three, column four, row one, row two, row three, row four. This is the same information made mathematical. If you look at the top left, that is a way of saying from node one to node one, there is one connection, okay? So this is actually a lot more useful than if you tried to say it out longhand. If you tried to write this out in English, it would be horrible. It would be this. It would be saying, from node one to node one, there exists one walk. From point one to point two, there exists one walk. On and on and on and on. And this would be a horrible thing to have to look at and use. That the matrix is much cleaner and simpler and quicker to be able to use the same bit of data. So mathematicians use this all over the place. They use this for zero dimensional, one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional, even four dimensional and beyond information. 
I'm not going to be doing that to you. I'm just going to be sticking to simple two-dimensional data and the connections that exist on flat trees. But know that this is a super powerful tool and can go anywhere. We're keeping it simple. So look at this one right here. How many different nodes are there? Four. How many ways can each one be connected? Four. So we're going to have a four by four matrix. So I want you on your note paper to take this out and to write on the, uh, the left side here that we've got the from one, two, three, four. And then we've got the two, one, two, three, four. And this makes a grid. This makes a matrix where you can say, all right, from number one to number one, how many connections are there? From number one to number two, how many connections are there? On and on and on and on. Pause the video and see if you can make the adjacency matrix for this tree. Did you get it right? Do you see how node number four, there's no way to get from node number four to anywhere. There is one way to get to node four, but there are no ways to leave node four. It's the Hotel California. You can't, you can't, you can never leave. So those all were one directional paths. Much more common, much more ordinary way to have things is um, where you have a undirected line segment connecting things, meaning that it is a two-way street. So if you look on this graph, uh, this digraph here in the bottom left corner, between one and three, there is a connection, and it goes from one to three or from three to one. So that it's, it's not, uh, it doesn't matter which way you're going. Now the one kind of exception to that is that the loops are just um, one, thing so that there's one way to get from four to four. Now here's, here's this same diagram then represented again in the way we just did in the bottom right that you could think about these loops uh, if you had to redraw each one but most of the time we're trying to save time and do these uh, with just one line between things. So what this does for you then is it means that your matrix is going to be super symmetrical. If we try to make the adjacency matrix for this particular tree uh, right here, you should end up with something that is symmetrical across the diagonal going from the top left to the bottom right. That you should get a matrix that you only really needed to make either the upper or the lower triangle of. You didn't need to do it all because it's so symmetrical. So pause the video, try to make this matrix. Hopefully your answer is symmetric like this, that you can see that there are as many paths from one to two as there are from two to one. Over and over again, there should be a nice uh, symmetrical pattern to your design, your layout of this tree. So now comes the awesome sauce. Yay, we can make pretty pictures of trees into matrices. I consider that to be a loss. The tree is a lot nicer to look at. What good is the matrix? Well, the awesome sauce, the secret sauce is, when you have that matrix, it represents how many walks of length one there are between the nodes. And if you square the matrix, it will show you how many walks of length two there are between each of the steps. If you cube the matrix, it will show you how many walks of length three there are between the nodes, and on and on and on for every power that you could possibly want to raise your matrix to. I know, right? Wow. Okay, so uh, what we should do is we should return to the previous slides and demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Okay, so back up. Um, let's go back to this one. Okay. Let's put this matrix in our calculator. If we put this matrix in our calculator and then we square it, this is telling us now how many two-step walks there are between any of these connections. This is telling me that if I want to go from node one to node two, that there are three ways that I could do that in two steps. If I want to go from node one to node three in two steps, there are six ways that I could do that, depending upon which of the various paths, paths that I want to take. But there are no two-step ways to get from node one to node four. 
there are no two-step ways to get from node 2 to node 4. So the kind of information that can be extracted from doing powers on these matrices is amazing. Let's look at the other one. This matrix here, if I put this in my calculator, if I put this matrix in my calculator and then I raise it to the second power or to the third power, a lot, a lot of information is visible to me. Now notice, because this is the matrix that we did that was symmetrical along the diagonal, even the powers are gonna be symmetrical along the diagonal. So if you look at this, you can still see that if I'm looking for two-step walks uh, or three-step walks, there's still only one way to get from four to four, that that lone node off by itself is not playing well with others. But if you look at B squared, and I look at uh, this one right over here, this is telling me there are three ways, two ways to get from three to three. That there are, a num there are two different ways to get from node three back to node three in two steps. There are six ways to get from node three back to node three in three steps. So I hope you can see that the exponent that we put on the matrix is determining the length, the number of steps in the walk that we want to take. So this is used all over the place. If you want to know how many friends does somebody have on Facebook that are within three connections of them, that you would need to take the matrix representing the relationships on Facebook and cube it. That this is all about the number of steps that it takes in connections to link data. So I would like for you to try one here. Draw a tree. Try to come up with something uh, simple. Just do four or uh, so um, nodes. Make a matrix that uh, represents the connection between those and raise it to a power. See if you can try this on your own. Pause the video. Um, I would love to tell you that you should go watch the movie Goodwill Hunting because it's got all of these kind of problems in it, but it is a cuss-filled uh, obscenity of uh, language-filled movie. So I can't recommend that for you. I can't tell you to go and watch Goodwill Hunting, but um, they are discussing this kind of math in it.